on the record, Taylor Acorn. Hi, Taylor. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to On the Record. I'm your host, Sherry Samuels. Um, so we are, we'll start off by saying we're so excited that you're here. And thank you for taking time out of your day. We know that you are on an amazing tour right now. So um, before we get started, we'd love to hear, just tell us who you are. Yeah. Um, okay, so my name is Taylor Acorn. Um, I come from a very small town in Pennsylvania. Um, graduated like 100 kids. Um, truthfully, never really saw music as being like my career, but it just so happened to you know, kind of work out in my favor. I moved to Nashville in 2017 and I was a country artist for about five years. And um, when COVID hit, I was just kind of confused. Didn't really know if country was the genre that I wanted to stay in. I grew up going to Warp Tour. I love pop punk. Paramore is one of my favorite bands. Mayday Parade is my favorite band. And so it's just, to me, going in that route made more sense. And um, so I decided to post a cover of Jamie All Over on TikTok, and now I'm here, and I'm a punk artist, and it's just really cool, yeah. That's awesome. It's really amazing. Well, just, I want to follow up on that. Like, how has that transitioned? Like, how do you think that, what does that represent to you? Like, how has the, the process and the journey been to sort of make that transition into pop punk? Honestly, it's really surreal. It feels very full circle. Um, mostly because you know the artists that i always looked up to and that inspired me the most were artists like avril lavigne you yeah. know amy lee from evanescence i literally listened to the fallen record when i was eight and i would like hide in my basement and that's all i would listen to and i'd try to like mimic her vocals and that's kind of how i learned how to sing and um hayley williams from paramore so whenever i like saw them i was like that's what i really want to do and now i kind of feel like that's what i am doing and i'm Getting able, I'm able to like connect with so many incredible people online, now offline and in person at these shows. And yeah. I don't know, it just, it feels really cool. And to be a female in the punk space where there's not very many anymore. Yeah. I don't know. It's just really cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I think the pandemic did mm -hmm. a lot, kind of was a really revealing moment for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like you being able to kind of undergo that transition is awesome. So oh, nice. that's great. <laughs> um, so you were on tour right now. Mm -hmm. um, tonight you're playing in Dallas, which is awesome. Yes. Um, tell us about how, this is your first tour, right? Yeah. Tell us about first. that experience. How did it all come, come about? Oh, wow. It is, it has been very crazy. <laughs> I am the only female um, on the entire bill. Yes. So that's been really interesting. Love it. Just hanging out with Love a bunch of it. boys every <laughs> night. <laughs> um, but thankfully, like, I have my team, Victoria. There's actually a lot of females, like, within the crews, and that's been really cool. So it's made me feel a little bit more comfortable. But, yeah, very first tour. Haven't had very many off days. I think we've had, like, two <laughs> since oh, wow. it started. So definitely a change of pace from when I was touring in country, where it was, like, Thursday through Sunday, and then you get like the rest of the week to kind of chill and recoup. And we've just been hauling it in a van and trying to make the best of it. Love we it. just installed a flat screen TV, so we've been playing video games and stuff, <laughs> which has been really nice. But yeah, it's it's been really fun. And awesome. again, yeah, I started doing the TikTok covers, and for the last two years, you know, I've only really been able to connect with people online, and to be able to see these people now in real life. And yeah. they're my friends because right. we built such an amazing relationship. It's, I don't know. It's it's very rewarding. It's so fun. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. You talked about TikTok. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like social media has had an impact on the music industry? How have you been able to leverage that in your career too? I mean, I have like a love hate relationship with it. We I all do. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I love the fact that it has opened so many doors for so many artists that may have not been able to get their name out there to begin with. Like I know for myself, um, when I was in country, you know, I kind of had like a little peak and then I was in a lull where I just wasn't connecting with my own music. And when I started doing the pop punk covers and stuff, it just opened myself up to a whole new audience mm -hmm. and people that 
would have never heard my music otherwise. And I'm so thankful for that. And I do, I, I applaud social media for m a majority of why I'm where I'm at right now. Yeah. And um, I know there are artists that have some hard times with it though, because no one wants to be an influencer. We want to be artists. We want to write music. We want to go out and tour. But when you're stuck only having to like be behind a screen, I think that that's kind of hard for some people. But I don't know. I, I was never really a, a super big streaming artist. I never really got a ton of playlists and things like that. And TikTok and Reels and all of those things have been the most organic reach to people and they genuinely go from the videos to actually streaming the music which is really cool it just helps us out yeah you know, the ones that yeah might not you know get the push that yeah. we want so that's awesome and yeah. i love this story that you told me earlier about um you finding your guitarist on, on yeah, social media yeah we found him on tiktok so it's like <laughs> We like love and hate that algorithm, mm -hmm. right? But like yeah. there's moments that there's really true connection that mm -hmm. comes out of it. So I think that's awesome. Let's talk about your music a little bit more. So I was just listening to Psycho. Oh my gosh. And I had it like on repeat yesterday because I was driving and it's really good driving music. Mm -hmm. Tell us what was your inspiration for writing that, creating that? So, it's her latest single, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, my song Psycho is... It's very interesting how it all kind of came about. I was writing with these two um, guys that I very much so admire as writers, um, but it was our first time ever writing together. Um, but one of my co-writers, Spencer Jordan, him and I, we've been friends for a few years now, so he kind of knows me. He knows what he thinks, I would say, and so he came in with this uh, first verse. And at first I was like, I hate that. <laughs> that. I would never say that. And um, but then you know he was like, you know, just give it a chance, give it a give it a few. We're gonna like rework it, and mm -hmm. you know, I kind of got to put my own spin on everything. And once we got the chorus finished, we both looked at each other and we're like, whoa, this is pretty cool. It's a little bit out there. I mean, granted, it kind of has like Goodbye Earl Dixie Chick or the Chicks kind yeah. of vibes, but like more punk. Yeah. Um, and you know. Right now, with like cancel culture and stuff, I was a little bit nervous about that. But you know, you kind of gotta take risks. And when I got the demo back, I was like, "All right, this is gonna be the next one." Mm -hmm. And it's just fun. And I think we've all been in situations in relationships where you know you may have been with somebody who would gaslit you into feeling a little bit crazy when maybe it was them. And uh, we can all relate. I, yeah, I definitely had been in a relationship like that for a few years. And um, so, yeah, it's just supposed to be fun and empowering and kind of like, I don't know, am I allowed to swear? No, no swear. Yeah, okay. Of course. Kind of gives you like that bad bitch energy, you know? Yes. Like, we live for afraid, the bad bitch energy. You know? It's like, yes. I mean, you're not going to go out and actually like hit somebody with your car, but yeah. I mean, hypothetically in your yeah. head, you might. It's so, pretty it's pretty therapeutic. Yeah, it's a good, like you said, it's a good song to scream in your car when yeah. you're by yourself. <laughs> yeah, we're here for that. We're here yeah. for that. Um, so, you kind of sort of touched on your writing process. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I talk to artists and they're like, I prefer the creative process and being in the studio. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, well, there's nothing like the thrill of being on a stage. Yeah. Which do you prefer? I, do you enjoy doing more? I, I love being on stage. Um, but I also love writing as well. Um, they're so different for me. Like mm -hmm. the processes, I, I write a lot by myself. Um, but there really is no other feeling than just like, being on stage and being able to share your music with people and yeah. like especially now you know we've been doing this thing every night where um we've been doing like a callback for psycho and like hearing people say the words back to you is just it's nothing like it there's nothing like it it's yeah. just a different energy and you really feed off of the energy that they're giving and if it's a really hype crowd like Mm -hmm. It's just so fun. It's fun. And yeah. I can kind of like step out of my normal like like chill yeah. side to, you know, be a little bit more crazy. And that's always really fun. Love that. Yeah. So part of what we do here is we do brand partnerships. Mm -hmm. We create marketing campaigns with artists. Yeah. Have you ever thought about what kind of brand you'd ever love, like envision yourself partnering with? Or it doesn't even need to be the name of the brand, mm -hmm. but like what do they stand for? And like 
what, what that sort of looks like for you? Oh my gosh, that's a loaded question. I know it is. <laughs> it's kind of, but um, I mean, I could definitely go the route like the skater girl in me would be like bands or yeah. something. I feel like they always have like um, really cool campaigns and things like that. But um, I don't know. I I'm very big on like sustainability and things like that mm -hmm. so to me I don't know I've never really like thought about it but yeah but it would need I to mean, be something it would that's be authentic something that to is, you yeah very much so authentic to me and I'm a big like if I use it like I want everybody to know about it kind yeah. of thing so when it comes to makeup and and stuff like that I'm yeah like, stuff like that I love makeup too so we'll have to talk about that yeah after we will <laughs> give I'm each not other good at it give each other tips I try my best <laughs> Awesome. Okay, yeah. well, I'm going to open it up if anyone else has questions that you want to ask. Um, so what are some of your, the big, like, TikTok music accounts that you follow? There's a lot of that cover I artists follow. out there. Some, what are some of the ones that have been influential? Um, well, Ricky, for instance, my guitarist, he, I have been following him for a while, and he's been taking, like, basically any pop song, any any song really in any genre and turning it into like a metal version. And I always thought that that was really, really cool and I, I watch his a lot. And there's another cover artist, his name is Loveless. Um, I watch him a lot and I think that he's really dope. Um, I'm like now trying to think of like the people that I follow on TikTok and honestly it's mostly just like random cooking accounts. <laughs> like my For You page is really weird. Um, but yeah, I follow a lot of like my friends and stuff from Nashville, other artists, and kind of see what they're going or what they're doing and try to hype them up on there as well. And yeah, cool. What artists would you like dream of collaborating with oh that would maybe surprise us? That would surprise you? Hmm. Oh my gosh, this is hard. Well, like one artist that I've always wanted to is like Avril Lavigne. Like, I would think that that was so amazing, but I don't think that would be a shock to anybody. <laughs> um, wow, somebody that would surprise. Um, like Evanescence would be really cool too. Or like, Bring Me the Horizon or something. I think that would be cool. That'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be different. Yeah, yeah. How is Real Friends uh, audience receiving you each night and how has it been to try to introduce yourself on a stage when people are paying to see some of that, to see. that process, <clears throat> like for you mentally and how have you overcome maybe some of the awkward moments? Um, so at first it was, I think with any new artist, especially, you know, I'm the only female. So I think, you know, within the pop punk community, the fans are very, very protective of their people and the, artists that they listen to so you know they bring somebody like me in who was a country artist and now I'm doing the pop punk thing and I get very nervous because I definitely want to come off as genuine and um, at, for the most part everyone has been so nice and so receptive and I think because there are so many other bands that are on the same bill their fans are starting to mix as well um, and I think they're starting to trust me more now. I think at first they definitely were like, who is this blonde girl? Like, <laughs> you know, but um, I think they're starting to trust me a little bit more and um, understand that, like, I, I love the music and the community just as much as they do. And if I wasn't on stage, I would be, you know, in the front row, like, yeah. you know, rocking out with them. So I think that's been the one thing I'm always nervous going up on stage and performing in front of them. Um, there was a little situation where, you know, there are there are girls that will, you know, they like to pick pick apart things, you know, the way that I perform or you know the way that I sound, and um, that's been a thing is like just ignoring what social media says mm -hmm. and just keep going and. They came around eventually, they did. Um, but at first, like, I don't blame them, you know? They're protective. There's always gonna be, be haters. Yeah. Haters are gonna hate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> and being on social media, you were yeah. not safe from that. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's been 
kind of like the one thing, you know, being the new kid on the block and trying to prove myself and prove that. I'm just like them, just yeah. a normal gal. Yeah, playing music. I love that they're like warming up and <laughs> yeah. more open arms. I think that's great. Yeah, and I will say like their fans are diehard fans yeah. as well. So if they if they open up to you and they they allow you in, they're gonna. I'm I'm pretty certain like some of these kids are gonna be with myself and I mean all of the other bands as well that maybe they had never heard of before. So for yeah. a long time. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well. Any other questions? And maybe one more from the audience. I'll follow up. It's just that, are you playing covers? And how are you thinking about the covers as they relate to um, the audience? So there's a lot of gatekeeping in, in our scene. Yeah. Um, so I do play, I play one cover. Um, and at first I was like really hesitant about that. I was like, should I just play all of my own music? But the covers have been such a huge part of my life. That's the reason why I'm even able to like yeah. make this kind of music now. And so um, I've been playing one every single night and I try to make it very intimate. Um, it, I play Jamie all over. So it's, it's hopefully within this scene, a song that everybody knows. Um, and I don't know, like I've been sitting down on the stage with them and I think everybody has been receptive to that because it kind of like makes me a little bit more vulnerable they're vulnerable because we're literally eye to eye looking at each other and they've been singing it so loud every night and i think that's kind of the moment where you know they might not know my first few songs that i play but as soon as they hear that they're like okay cool like yeah. we can be we can be cool we can chill out we can sing and have a good time and you know it just like opens that yeah like trust for us so. yes yeah. vulnerability is key yeah Vulnerability, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, before we wrap, yeah. what's next for Taylor? Oh my gosh. Um, well, definitely more music to yes, come. Um, I have a song coming out actually this Friday, which I totally forgot about. Oh, awesome. Um, Plug it. Yeah. Plug it. I have a song coming out this Friday <laughs> called Wishing You Hell. <laughs> um, that was supposed to come out earlier this month, but yeah. we, we pushed it a little bit and um, that one we've been playing every night on tour and it's been really fun um awesome. it's a great opening track and uh, so that's coming out more music in the springtime and then another tour in the spring so awesome yeah amazing yes. well thank, thank you again so much thank for being you here for having we me. loved having you thank you everybody for the well, questions and i think we're gonna hear some music next yeah let's do it <laughs> righty so we're gonna play a few songs for you guys um we're going to start off with Psycho, which is the one that I was talking about, is a little bit like Goodbye Earl, the chicks kind of vibes, but more punk. Granted, we're going to be playing it acoustic, so it's not going to be as hardcore for you, but punk we're going to try. Yeah, punk is acoustic. So uh, this is Psycho. <laughs> Never been one of the crazy ones Never been the girl to leave you like 30 missed calls I'm not a villain but you made me one So now I'm throwing knives at pictures of your face on my wall It seems like boys like you all love to say The chicks like me are just insane But boys like you give men a shitty name So let's play a game Where I throw a little brick through your pretty little face You're easy on the but you're easier to hate An angel's gonna fall if you come around If my name's still on your tongue Then I'll rip it out Since I'm already the bad guy in your head I'll hit you with my car Then I'll leave you for dead And I've always liked the view From the high road But baby, be you I'll be a psycho I'll be a psycho Maybe you'll end up in a body bag If I can't have you then nobody can Cause I watched all the documentaries I know just where to hide it I'll put you in a box six feet deep And wait till you wake up inside it Boys like you all love to say The chicks like me are just insane But boys like you give men a shitty name So let's play a game where I throw a little brick through your brick Jesus. 
for you guys is one of my favorite songs I ever got to put out, um, one of my favorite songs I've ever written. It's called Shape Shifting, and uh, it's definitely a little bit more emo, so don't cry too much. <laughs> How was I supposed to know I'd feel nothing in my bones? Been putting on a show for everybody but me I've been coming home alone Dying fast and living low At least that's how it feels when I can't sleep I don't think that I can do this anymore Lying awake another night here on the bathroom floor This isn't what I wanted or is it everything? I just wanna make sense of it all Can't swim when I'm sinking How was I supposed to know? I'd feel nothing in my bones Been putting on a show for everybody but me I've been coming home alone Dying fast and living low At least that's how it feels When I can't sleep Shape shift Shaking hands with everything that's haunting me How can I stand when I don't trust my own two feet? Yeah, this isn't what I wanted Or is it everything? I just need to make sense of it all How was I supposed to know? I'd feel nothing in my bones Been putting on a show for everybody but me I've been coming At least that's how it feels when I can't sleep If I fade away, will they miss me? They call my name, but it's too late Am I supposed to know? I'd feel nothing in my bones Been putting on a show, shape-shifting, shape-shifting oh. I feel nothing in my bones Oh no Shape shifting I can't swim when I'm sinking How was I supposed to know? I'd feel nothing in my bones Been putting on a show for everybody but me I've been coming home alone If I fade away, will they miss me? They call my name, but it's too late Am I supposed to know? I feel nothing in my bones Been putting on a show, shape-shifting, shape-shifting 
Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for having me also. This has been awesome.